The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship on the 27th Sunday after Pentecost, which we are celebrating as the Festival of Christ the King. This finally brings the long Pentecost season to its close and concludes the year of St. Mark's Gospel. Compared to many other festivals of the church year that uh, developed uh, in the earliest years of the church, this is relatively recent in its origin. It was established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI in response to the rampant nationalism that developed after World War I and the greed and materialism that arose out of the so-called Roaring Twenties. Both of those forces are still powerfully present and at work in our society and world, but the scriptures remind us that death is the great equalizer. Nations and kings and empires rise and fall, and one must leave money and possessions behind at the grave. Only one who has left the grave forever behind can truly be said to endure. And so in the words of our second reading from Revelation, God has made Jesus the firstborn of the dead, ruler of all the kings and nations of the world. And the writer goes on to say that we then too are called to bear witness to Christ's reign over against all the other pretenders to his throne until the promised return of Christ to fulfill creation as God intends. Please make sure that you have signed the guest pads and pass them along and greet those with whom you are worshiping. As always, thank you to Maggie and the band and the choir for leading our worship. Jerry's not feeling well this morning, so Maggie's going to be doing double duty, running up and forth, back and forth between the balcony and here. So thank you, Maggie, for filling in at the last minute. There will be coffee downstairs after the service. We hope to see you there. Please continue to be generous in your donations to the November Mission of the Month, the Guardians of the Children of Michiana. Uh, and also to our non-perishable items for our food pantry box. As you can see, you can get an early start on the December missions of the month, the Salvation Army Angel Tree that is up in the upper narthex there, and also the Keys to Hope Kringle kits, uh, supplies for the homeless men and women that they serve. Um, so please be aware of that in the next weeks to come. Finally, uh, Donna posted this on our church Facebook page yesterday, but in case you didn't see it, there is an old scam uh, that is still going around. One of our members got a text message yesterday purporting to be from Pastor Nichols from the Methodist Church asking our member to use their credit card to buy gift cards for cancer victims and then the promise that the person saying that they were Pastor Nichols would pay them back. Obviously, this is a scam, so if you get a text message like that, please ignore it. And please continue to be vigilant about any text message or email or phone call asking you for credit card or bank information. With that, we are ready to begin with our processional hymn. As you are able, please rise and face the rear of the name. Rejoice for Christ.
God is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, to Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, you have granted everlasting dominion and a kingship that shall not pass away. Remove from us every desire for privilege and power, that we may imitate the sacrificial love of Christ our King, and as a royal and priestly people, serve you humbly in our brothers and sisters. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels fight were fought burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. second reading from Revelations. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come 
and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Judeans? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Judean, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus said to him, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Judean. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus said to him, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is it. The day toward which the entire church year has been moving and driving. It is meant to fulfill all that we have said about Jesus over these long months. The preparing and hoping and waiting of Advent. The good news of great joy of Christmas the epiphany of Jesus as the light that draws all people out of their darkness, the turning to new hearts and minds of Lent, the passion of Holy Week, the power of Easter resurrection, and the coming of the Spirit to equip us to bear witness to Jesus have all led us to this moment. And this day and these texts are meant to encourage us with the promise that our lives are not ruled by fate or chance, or chaos, or darkness. Against all the evidence that seems to the contrary, we boldly proclaim that Jesus is in control of our lives and our world. But that doesn't mean that we're passive spectators to his reign. Rather, as we prayed, God wants to help us in our words from Revelation to be a kingdom, those in whom God's presence and power is seen and known as we serve Jesus and his Father as their priests. But that's why all of the language about king and kingdoms between Jesus and Pilate here in our gospel is somewhat misleading. 
We moderns hear the word kingdom and we think fairy tales and castles and princesses and knights around the table. But as scholar Caroline Lewis points out in the meditation at the beginning of the bulletin, the kingdom of God is not a geographical place. It is, she says, a state of being, a way to live, a commitment to view the world in a particular way. And yet it would be easy to view the world as being anything but under the control of Jesus. The violence that he tells Pilate his followers reject seems too firmly entrenched both in our individual and collective DNA to be dislodged. Deep social and racial and religious and political divisions appear to be immune to healing. Hatreds that fuel endless wars and the anger and bitterness that is tearing the fabric of our families and communities and societies apart seems insurmountable. And we may be getting to the point where the damage we are doing to the planet can no longer be reversed. But the good news that Jesus tells Pilate is that it is for this very reason that he was born and came into this world of chaos and violence and darkness and division so that he might testify to the truth. And the truth is the same one that he declared earlier in John's Gospel, that God so desperately loves the world that he gave, literally handed over his Son to all of those forces that destroy God's good intentions for us. Jesus absorbed all of those on the cross. He gathered them up into his arms and made them his own and let them murder him. But then Revelation promises God made him the firstborn from the dead. In the resurrection, God reclaims this broken and wayward creation as his own. Hatred and violence and anger and division no longer rule over us, and neither they nor anything will be able to resist Jesus' love that will be all and will fill all in all. Until that promised end of all things, we are those in whom Jesus' love are seen and known as we serve him as his priests. Now, priests stand between God and humanity. Our calling is cruciform in nature. On the one hand, as we do every week in our prayers, we intercede for those victims of violence and hatred and darkness and division. But on the other hand, we also embody the mercy and kindness and compassion and forgiveness of Jesus that is so foreign to the kingdoms of this world. That is our state of being. That's how we live. That is the way in which we view the world. So after all these months, all of the preaching and singing and praying can be summed up in two words. Jesus reigns over the universe and in and through you. So it will be so, Revelation declares, amen. And to that hope and that promise, let us also add our great amen. Thank <laughs> you. 
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. The day he rose again, corn was with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We do not have one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers before God's throne of grace, asking that God's mercy be poured out on all who wait for Christ's promised reign of justice and peace and that all people everywhere may be united under the gentle rule of Christ. That the church, the sign of God's reign, may faithfully share in Christ's suffering love for the world, we pray. May your kingdom come, O Lord. That the leaders of nations may be turned from governance by force or violence and conformed to Christ's rule of mercy and justice, we pray. May your kingdom come, O Lord that those who are seeking God or striving to know the truth may find in the life of our congregation the faith and love that point to Christ, we pray. May your kingdom come. That the sick, especially Russ Fisher, Grace Romine, Venia Went, Martha Schroeder, Joy Stark, Jess Calvitas, Janet Green, Kathy Stein, and Debbie Martin may know the healing presence of Christ, we pray. That those celebrating anniversaries, especially Dave and Sue Pfeiffer, may be filled with grace this day and every day, and grow in grace in the days ahead, we pray. That when Christ comes to judge the living and the dead, we, with all the faithful, especially Justice Faulkner, Jehu Jones and William Passavant, pastors of North America, who we commemorate this day, will be ready to welcome him with grateful hearts, we pray. Lord, your reign, O God, endures forever, and in Christ we are free to be your saints and servants. Hear our prayers for the sake of him who died and rose again, and lives with you in the company of all your saints in light. Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace.
pray. Eternal God, in, in his, his great love, love your Son offered his life for us. By your great grace, you have made us priests to serve you and your whole creation. With thankful devotion, we offer you these gifts and with them our very lives. Receive them for the sake of your Son. By this holy sacrament, strengthen us to faithfully testify to the truth of your everlasting reign. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, dominion be to you, Lord God, for your word was alive in creation, is present in the power of the Spirit, and will come in glory on the last day. You made with the house of David an everlasting covenant, and your goodness is like the sun on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on a grassy land. You sent Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. He freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests serving you forever. God of truth, your Son came to testify to you and lead us into all righteousness. You have prepared for us such things as pass our understanding. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people that your word may be on our lips. Make holy this bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who in the night in which he was betrayed took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all beginnings and endings, your Son declared that his kingdom was not of this world. Bless the governance of every earthly kingdom, that it may be ruled justly in spirit and in truth. Visit your children who live in fear, dwell under oppression, 
experience cruelty or suffer discrimination. Turn struggle into hope, hope into freedom, freedom into justice and justice into love. Bring to those who have never known you or have forgotten or rejected you the light of your grace and the thirst for your mercy until your sun comes with the clouds and all eyes will see him and every tribe and tongue will lift your name on high, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. They will come from east and west and north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who were called to the supper of the Lamb, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Come, for all is now ready. King 
Come be 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us a royal priesthood in the kingdom of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Make known his victory through us, we pray, that all the world may see his light and be joined in love under his glorious rule. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.